Okay, last exercise for reading documentation. We're going back to our career website and we're going to add some pictures in this time. So first step, we already know the drill. We got to copy our code over and then we'll, uh, we'll make some edits. Okay, so first edit we're going to make is add pictures. Find four images that represent the career to you. Each image should have the alt text defined to explain what the image is about. I'll talk more about the alt text in a moment. Remember to use pictures that you are legally allowed to use. Check the copyright and make sure to attribute the image if that's necessary. Okay, we already talked about this in our copyrights lesson. It's really important that we are giving credit to photographers and artists for any images that we're using and making sure that we're using images for public use okay next we're going to add some styles once you have the images add some styling to the images in style css make all the images 200 by 200 give all the images a five pixel solid black border to make them easy to see and then check the docs if you've forgotten how to set the border Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Let's go. Okay, so the first step is copying our code over. So let's open up this link in a new tab and let's copy over our page. Remember, we added that milestones page, so don't forget to copy the code over for that as well. Okay, so first let's start with the index page. We'll copy this and paste it over the comment. Okay, we'll go over to job info and copy all that control a Ooh, that's going to copy everything never mind okay so just make sure you're grabbing everything and then paste it over in job info finally milestones that's the last html page we just did that in the last time we revisited this project okay we're going to paste that in and then last but not least our style sheet okay this thing is steadily growing with new rules. Okay, so control C and then paste that in as well. All right, so that should be it, but I always like to run it just to make sure that things are looking how they should. Okay, so, okay, uh, my background image is not showing here, so let me make sure I got everything. I'm not sure what's going on with my background image right now. Oh, okay. So it looks like I didn't copy over my style sheet properly. Okay, so again, here's an example, a prime example of making sure that we grab everything. Okay, so copy and paste. All right, so let's run that. Okay, beautiful. Okay, so it looks like everything's good to go now. All right, let's go ahead and get started on this exercise. So we are going to find four images that represent the career to you. Each image should have the alt text defined to explain what the image is about. Remember to use pictures that you are legally allowed to use. Okay, so we can um, do that using um, some of Google's image filters, which I'll show you in a moment. All right, let's work on that first. It is not telling us where to put the pictures. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and put them on the index page, okay? In your project, you can place these wherever you want to put them, okay? Since it's not telling us um, a specific place here, you can feel free to put them uh, again wherever you feel they're most appropriate, all right? So in the first um, image, I'm going to set up the tag. Okay, remember the source attribute is where you're going to paste the link to your image, and the alt attribute can go right after it. Okay, so the alt attribute, we have not used this before. This is, um, alt stands for alternate, okay? And the exercise is saying that it should have um, an explanation of what the image is, a description of the image. Essentially, this will show up if for any reason, the image that you are linking to is unavailable, okay? So if you're linking to something from Google image search, it may be removed and then you'll get a broken image icon instead. So you may have seen this when you're loading images on the internet, that little broken image icon means the image file is missing, it's unavailable, it's just not there. Okay, so what would show up in place of that is the alt text, but that's not the only time you would see or 
that the only time that alt text is useful. If someone is using a screen reader device, for instance, they may be blind, that you're using a screen reader to access the internet or access the web, the device will read text that's inside of our tags. And when it gets to images, it will read the alt text information. So alt text is not just important for having a backup for missing images, it's also important for building accessibility into your web pages and making them accessible to a wider audience. So I just wanted to touch on that because it's really important and something that all good coders um, should, should do as a habit. Okay, so we have our four images set up. I'm putting them on the home page. You can put your images wherever you'd like. Okay, I'm just going to put them here for now and then maybe move them around later. Okay, so over in Google Image Search, I've searched up my career that I'm using on my webpage, which is Digital Content Creator, and you want to find four images that you'd like to put in. Okay, so I'm going to choose four images that I like. All right, so starting with this one up here, I like these painted social media icons. It's really artsy and um, related to my career. So I'm just going to copy this image address and I'm going to paste it inside of the source tag. Okay, now in the alt text, I'm going to put in a description. So I'm going to put in my description is painted. Oops, make sure you're putting that inside of the quotes. Yeah. Painted social media icons. Okay, so if for any reason your I'm just going to undo this really quick. I'm going to put in my alt text first. Okay, sometimes code HS can get a little glitchy when you are scrolling over and you have long lines of text. So just to avoid any issues, I'm just going to put my alt text in first. Okay, so that looks good. If I run my code, I should be able to see this in my homepage. Okay, looks nice. Just want to point out that that the alt text isn't showing because the image is available. Okay, so let me demonstrate what would happen if the image wasn't available. Or let's say that you weren't copying and pasting this. For some reason, you're um, typing in this link. I know that you wouldn't be, but let's just use that as an example. So let's say that I forgot this number four, okay, which is part of the link to this image. Now what's going to happen is it's obviously not going to be pointed to that image anymore because now I have a whole new image address. If I refresh that, I should be able to see my alt text show up in place of the image. Oh, okay, so that's not really happening. Did I save this? Okay, there we go. All right, so because that now that social, um, that address is not correct, it is now not able to find the image. I get the broken image icon and I can see the alt text show up instead. Okay, so really important. The alt text is useful when you have broken images and you still want to get the idea across and or someone's using a screen reader. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that back in because I do want to use that image and I do want it to show. Okay, so this looks good. One other thing I want to point out, you want to make sure that your images are labeled for reuse. Okay, so if you open up the tools under your um, images, you'll able you'll be able to filter by um, different licenses. So if you select labeled for reuse, that means that these images are safe to use, they're in the public domain, and you can use them in your project. So make sure that you're using images that are labeled for reuse because it takes a lot of time to create these works as you take a lot of time to make works that you um, put effort into, whether it's writing or photography or drawing. And you want to make sure that you are you know, staying within the correct bounds. Okay, so that should uh, do it for the first image. And um, there's a, a whole bunch of other filters here. We're not going to talk about them now, but feel free to explore. Um, it really helps with narrowing and filtering out images. Okay, so that takes care of the images. Now let's go ahead and work on the next part. I'm going to just leave it at one image for now. I'd like you to add in your four images and let's move on to styling. Okay, so in the styles, we're going to add some styling to the images. In style CSS, make all the images 200 by 200, give them a five pixel solid black border, and um, you can use the docs if you've forgotten how to set the border. Okay, so over in style CSS, I'm going to um, write a new rule 
for image because I don't have an image rule already. So I will go ahead and create one. Okay, so the width is 200 pixels. The height is 200 pixels. And finally, the border. Remember, you can use the docs if you forgot the properties. Our border color, width, and style. So I'm going to add that in. Border dash color. And we're giving it a black border. Border dash width. Oops. Of five pixels. And border style. It does not matter what order you put this in, color with style, style with color, it's going to work either way. Okay, so let's make sure we got that correct. Five pixels, solid black, looks good. Let's save this and refresh. Okay, so your image should have a black solid border. Looks great. Okay, uh, you'll notice my borders appear for my other images, but now they're just little black squares because there's no image in there. Okay, that wraps up the demo for career website adding pictures. This also wraps up lesson 10, reading documentation. Very nice work on this exercise. Keep it up, everyone.